I know. And as soon as it started breaking, I was like, oh my God, it's like the Young House Love has a podcast when they have a guest. (laughs) Do they actually record right from the very beginning? Like, do they have the ringing involved and everything? Yeah, they do. Oh. They have the pretending to answer and everything, but obviously they knew they were calling. Oh. I'm not that fancy. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Today, I am talking to Heather Laura Clark, who is my friend from Truro, and she is at heathershandmadelife.com, and you can find her on Twitter and Instagram at HFXHeather. And today, we are going to be talking about some non-traditional self-care items or practices that we can implement in our life, things that we might not always think about, because everybody's always talking about massages and face masks and things like that, but that is not what self-care looks like for most people in our day-to-day lives. And she had a really interesting one a few months ago that, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, we need to have (laughs) Heather on and talk about this. So welcome, Heather. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to have you, a Susie super fan. (laughs) Oh, I'm a huge Susie fan. (laughs) I love this podcast. (laughs) Oh, that sounds so self-indulgent to say that. Anyway, um, (laughs) so the post that I saw that is what got me thinking I needed to have you on for this is you were sorting Lego by color. And I just thought, oh, that that would soothe my soul so well. It sounds very different from bubble baths and massages, doesn't it? It sounds more up my alley, honestly. I can't tell you the last time I had a professional massage. It was oh, yeah. over a decade ago, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, same with me. But, yeah, you know, but- I sort things a lot of times, so that I can relate to. <laughs> I was having a really bad day, and um, I said, got my husband to take the kids out to Taekwondo, and I thought, what can I do to make myself feel better? And I just ended up wandering into his bedroom, and we built him a big Lego desk, and it has different bins where we can sort the Lego by color. And he's pretty organized. He keeps it in the right bins, which is great. But every once in a while, his table gets completely covered with pieces and half-finished Lego creations. And so you sort of have to break them all down and sort the pieces back so he has play space again. And I just sat there for like an hour and a half taking apart these creations and putting the red pieces in the red bin and the blue pieces in the blue bin and the little wheels and windshields in the wheels and windshields bin. And it was so soothing. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. (laughs) It was. I feel like, you know, whenever you feel overwhelmed with life and you feel like everything's out of your control, it helps when you can have control over something, even if it's something as small as sorting Lego. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I used to like to make jewelry. So I had all these seed beads and I would sort them, except my downfall was I sorted them in like an ice cube tray. And Mm. one day the tray took a tumble. Oh, that hurts to listen to. Yeah, so if you go in my old bedroom at my parents' house, you probably can still find seed beads on the floor from 20 years ago because it was those suckers that you can't vacuum up seed beads very well. So they're still everywhere, but yes. A well-sorted anything just makes gives me such a thrill. Well, I know we're both big fans of Gretchen Rubin, and I mean, mm-hmm. her mantra, outer order, inner calm. That's, that's exactly how I feel about everything in life. I just like things to be organized and calm, not cluttered, and it just makes me feel better about everything. Yeah. When we moved um, from our apartment to, we lived with my parents for a little while where, while we were building the house that we live in now, we had all of our movies in the room that we were staying in at my parents. And that very first night, I was like, I'm sorry, I cannot go to bed until I have <laughs> alphabetized these. Um, yep. I can see them from where I am laying, and I need, I cannot have the rock next to my oh. A item. I need to have these organized before I'm going to sleep. That's just all there is to it. Yep, exactly. It's such an easy thing to do, and it's so calming. I also have my nail polish shelf, which I talked about in my episode with Laura a couple weeks ago, and I hung that sucker up. Actually, it was the shelf I got when we went to the Ikea event, when they let us into Ikea before it was open. That was so much fun. It was. I organized all my nail polish by brand and then color. It's very oh. soothing as well. I feel like I have so many different things like that. I organize my paints by color. Um, I organize my nail polish by color. My goodness, books. What about it's your so- fabric? Is your fabric organized by color? 
definitely organized by color. I actually have so much fabric that it's in probably 16 bins on one of those big Ikea cube systems. So I have a red bin for the red fabric, yellow bin for the yellow fabric, and that kind of thing. And the bins are organized in Roy G. Biv order. Oh, of course. Really? You cannot not follow Roy G. Biv no, when you have no. a color thing happening. Absolutely. And you have to say it out loud as you do it. Roy G. Biv. Yeah. And, you know, I just realized a couple months ago when I was doing chakra trainings with my uh, Wellness Simplified membership people that there's a color associated with each chakra. And I didn't realize that even those are in Roy G. Biv order. And that thrilled me so much. Oh, that must be so beautiful to look at. Yeah, when I realized that chakra one starts with red and it just goes up. And I was like, my life has just changed knowing that even the yoga people are following the Roy G. Biv attitude. And I know that that's what sparked me wanting to talk to you today. But Heather is a rock star and she's put together a list of some other non-traditional self-care items. So do you want to tell us about some of those? I do. I kind of broke them into categories because, you know, that's what I do as a writer. Yes. Uh, uh, Most of my ideas um, are are very creative self-care because I'm a creative person. Um, I'm a journalist. I'm a blogger. I do a DIY column. Um, I'm I'm used to creating multiple projects every single week. And you're a painter, a sewer. You did your pottery. You did all sorts of things. So everything. (laughs) So uh, one of my big self-care things that I started last year when my youngest child started primary and I actually had more time during the day was I started taking pottery classes and oil painting classes and rug hooking classes um, because I just, I never got to go to art school when I was younger. I went to journalism school. So now that I'm older, I'm in my mid thirties. This is my time I feel to sort of create that experience for myself. Which one is the last one that you took? Or are you in uh, one right now? I'm not in one right now. Work has been pretty busy lately, but the last one I took was a rug hooking class, oh, which I so. I just love taking classes and learning new things. I think it's so much fun. And it gets you out of your own head when you have to try and learn something new. And that oh, is a big part of self-care is getting out of your head. Exactly. My pottery instructor, she said she has some students that come, you know, regularly year after year because it's cheaper than therapy. Yeah. And their doctors told them, you need to go to pottery. It's cheaper than therapy, and you get something lovely at the end of it as well, as in addition to the mental health benefits. Exactly. That's why I love creative, creating things. I love to have something that you make with your own two hands, and you get to keep it or give it away or do something like that. I mean, I love woodworking. I love building furniture. I love remaking furniture. I like to take furniture off the curb, sand it down, repaint it. I don't always keep everything that I make. Sometimes I make it for a client. Sometimes I make it for the newspaper and then give it to someone. But I just love being able to make something. Um, I do a lot of sewing. I sew pretty much all of my kids' clothes. And they're amazing. They're, thank you. That's It's a really fun hobby for me. And then also kids need clothes so they're not naked. So it's this kind is of like true. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a fun hobby for me that has a good purpose in the end. Um, I find one of the, my biggest self-care things, though, is even just ironing fabric and cutting out pattern pieces, mm-hmm. like, with trashy TV on in the background. So you don't really have to focus on what you're doing or what you're watching. Your mind can just wander. And but ironing some- just plain fabric would be so much nicer than ironing stupid shirts and things that you have to pay so much more attention to. I never iron shirts. I don't think I have any that need to be ironed. I only iron fabric. I Yeah, I only iron if I'm doing like a iron on transfer or something I will iron the fabric that I'm going to put it on and then obviously when I'm doing the transfer but otherwise normal clothing no no yeah ironing can be very soothing when it's fabric because it's warm and it kind of steams up especially when you're ironing like a nice crisp cotton I'm getting all the goosebumps just thinking about it I'm gonna have to go next door to my mother's house and get some fabric just to iron Nothing better than fabric. Going to a fabric store and wandering around, that is a huge self-care item for me. Yeah. It's just so beautiful to see all of the different colors and patterns and imagine what you could make with them. I also um, I make quilts. I do hand, um, hand sewing, cross-stitch, embroidery. Um, I love being able to just sit on the couch, you know, watch a show before I go to bed and just be able to work on something like that while I'm watching. Okay, I so don't... cross-stitch is not a soothing item for me. I... 
<laughs> it, I don't know why it makes me so angry. I think it's because it's so slow moving. I don't know. Embroidery, I am totally happy with. But cross stitch, for some reason, and this goes back many years, it just makes me crabby. So that's, I have to, I've, I've, I'm out of cross stitch. But yeah. embroidery, I'm all in on that. <laughs> Embroidery is more rewarding. It is faster than cross stitch for sure, but yeah. I like the mindlessness of cross stitch where you can sort of, you know, do your X's one direction and then just go back and fill them in the other direction. You don't have to think about it. As long as you're paying attention to your pattern. And that's probably where I get uh, in trouble is I start forgetting to look or I mess it up and then I get mad, but... No, for sure. <laughs> I know my husband recently, for his self-care, he started doing jigsaw puzzles on our dining room table. And it just drives me crazy to watch him because I think you're spending hours and hours doing this and you have nothing to show for it in the end. Yeah, you I just have to pick it back up. apart. Yeah. Like that's, I just couldn't do that. It makes me so frustrated because my self-care items when I'm creating something, I mean, it's something that you can keep or someone can keep. Yeah, and I always think it's nice that... If you have something specific going on in your life and you can relate the thing that you made to that time in your life, like I have a number of paintings from the year that my two cats passed away and I have one that I did the day before Pico had to be put down and every time I look at that I think of him. No, they can have so much meaning in them for sure. And I also have another painting actually that I was working on when the little post from the SPCA came up that had Rose and Clara's picture and I was oh. like I need those cats I need them so I actually have a painting that reminds me of when Oli passed away when Pico passed away and then the day that we got the two new kittens so oh. it's kind of sad but kind of nice full circle all at the same time and it's all in the same medium so that's kind of neat oh that's really nice um, one of my other weird self-care items that I started doing recently is I found this website where you can play retro computer games, oh. and I was really into computers as a kid. Um, I had my own, like, old school, you know, probably weighed 50 pounds laptop when I was eight, and I used to play Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune and all these super old games. I remember those ones, too. Yeah. And then later on, like, Jill of the Jungle and... Yes! And I had yeah. Jill of the Jungle! Yes, but you can play it for free online. <laughs> it's super fun. So uh, sometimes I'll, uh, if I'm having a really bad day, I will take 10 minutes. I will go and do a round of Jeopardy. Um, when I was a kid, I had memorized all the questions and answers. Mm -hmm. I do not still have them in my memory, but sometimes one of them will pop up and I'll be like, I remember that from when I was 8 or 9. Yeah, isn't that funny? I have my... Game Boy still from 1990 whatever and so I still have all of the original Game Boy games like the original Tetris and the original Super Mario for Game Boy and Castlevania and a couple other ones that I can haul out at any moment. Oh my god that's the best self-care you should totally do that. We usually get to it when the power goes out and we have nothing to do and we're like all right Tetris uh, championship going down right now. <laughs> that's amazing I feel like a lot of self-care is you know nostalgia and things that you liked when you were a child can still bring you comfort um, I also discovered recently the site archive.org mm -hmm. and you can find out of print books that you could no longer buy online or no longer find in your library and so I found this series that I loved as a kid it's called the girls of Canby Hall and it's about girls at a boarding school in the 80s <laughs> How did I miss this? Oh, yeah. That sounds like it would have been right up my alley. I was a big Sweet Valley Twins fan. I didn't like Sweet Valley High. I read one book and somebody got raped, and I was like, nope, not for me. I'll go back to the 13-year-olds. But I had every single Sweet Valley Twins book that was ever made. Interesting. I was into the Babysitter's Club. I didn't oh, yeah. Into you know that they are making, I can't remember if it's a movie or a series for Netflix. It's the Babysitter's Club. Oh, it's a series. I'm in a Babysitter's Club fan group, and we all talk about it. Oh, Heather, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know fun. when it's coming out? Um, I don't think that they have done even the casting yet. I think oh, come on, a guys. No, don't come announce on. that if you're not going to have updates for us people. Exactly. No, that's another one of my self-care items is this Babysitter's Club podcast. It's called Babysitter's Club Club. And it's two guys, like, in their 30s who each episode they read a different Babysitter's Club book and discuss it. Amazing. And that brings 
so much happiness because I was obsessed with those books. That sounds like, uh, what was it called? The Gilmore Guys? A couple guys that watched all of the Gilmore Girls and did a podcast about each episode? Yep, exactly like that. Yeah. But things like that, I mean, you know, they made me so happy as a kid. And so even now as a 35-year-old, I mean, they make me really happy. The podcast makes me happy. I love being able to go on this site and find these totally old random books. Like Baby Island was another one I read recently. <laughs> it's from the 50s. <laughs> that's how I don't even know what that's about, but it sounds very interesting. <laughs> it's about two 12-year-old girls, or they're like 12 and 13, and they get shipwrecked on a desert island with four babies to take care of. Oh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a, But they're so happy because they love babies, and it's well, a really that's... cute little book set in the 50s. I'm glad they're happy because I would have just been at my wit's end. Be like, oh, these babies, what am I supposed to do with them on this island? They oh, give them coconut milk. Well, that's very ingenious for the 50s. I know. And they also had tinned milk and tinned beef underneath the seats of the lifeboat. Obviously. Obviously. They couldn't have them die in the book. Well, no. That would have been... Even to let a baby die would have been terrible. Yep. No, it's a, it's a very strange book, but it was really nice to be able to read it again. So I have a very I... strange book that my great aunt gave me before she passed away. And it was published... Oh, was it the early 1900s? I can't remember. It's the most odd book I've ever read in my life. It was mm. written for children. It makes no sense whatsoever. Like, I don't think they had an editor. They were just like, oh, this looks all right. And they published it. But every once in a while, I sit down and read it because it is just so odd. And I find it so fascinating. My goodness. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to have to find it. I can't even think of what it's called right now. But it's something very odd. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm also a huge fan of reading. I love your Susie Reads a Lot account. It gives me lots of great ideas. I am still fully invested in To the Boys I've Loved Before series. Oh, yeah. I just finished the third book, and I am a 37-year-old completely and utterly invested in these 16- to 18-year-olds' lives. They cannot make the next movie fast enough for me. I am having a lot of issues with the fact that it is not ready right now. Um, yeah, I'm very invested. I need to read something else because it's becoming unhealthy, I think. <laughs> I'm uh, reading Busy Phillips' autobiography that you recommend. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, very good. I like celebrity autobiographies. I actually I did didn't know who she even was. <laughs> really? I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, I feel bad, but I didn't. <laughs> then I remembered her from Dawson's Creek. Yes. But I didn't even realize she had the Busy Tonight Show. And, at, yeah. spoiler, at the end of the book, she talks something about wanting to be a talk show host. And then she's like, and here we are. And I was like, so where are we? I don't know where we are. <laughs> That's amazing. I really loved her on Cougar Town, too. One of my weird um, self-care things is I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I'm pretty busy with all of my crafting and everything that I do with work. But when I do watch TV and I'm by myself, my guilty pleasure is watching it with the captions on. Oh, yeah? I love to see every single word. And sometimes when you're just listening, you don't catch everything, especially if someone's talking really quickly. Mm -hmm. And I love to see, like, every single word that the writer wrote. I like to see, um, when I have closed captions on for whatever reason, I like to see when they make a mistake. And I don't know why that thrills me. But when I'm like, oh, that's not what they said. <laughs> I love that, too. That's like when I correct the um, grammar and spelling in a menu. <laughs> yes. Well, you can correct lots of grammar and spelling in anything I write because I t do not proofread for the most part. It's not that I don't know grammar or spelling. It's just that I can't be bothered because I got too many other things to do. So I'm like, oh, yeah. if, if people have a problem with it, they can just move on. I got to get this out and move on with my day. Oh, absolutely. I find sometimes even when my friends text me, they're kind of nervous. They don't want to make a mistake because they know I'm going to notice. And I'm like, it's fine in texting. Yeah. Fine in texting, but I think the closed caption people should be a little more careful. Yeah, I can give them a little bit of leeway if it's live. Yes, for sure. But that's it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes baking is a really good self-care thing for me. Same. I like to bake for like, my kids and my husband, and I bake for the neighbors. I actually hate cooking, um, but sometimes I find... I'll actually take a break from my work mid-afternoon and, like, start dinner, and that does make me feel better because I know it's something that I have to do. And then supper comes and it's ready. 
Exactly. And then it yeah. gives you an because you're like, oh, wow, look, it's all ready. I'm a big fan of the slow cooker. Put a lot of things in there. Sometimes mm -hmm. I even feel really accomplished if I think to put, if we're going to have steak for supper, if I put it in some marinade, then I feel like I've won the day. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. you're being proactive. And then um, it tastes I, better, too. <laughs> exactly. Um, Self-care for me sometimes is, like, making lists of things that I have to do, things that I have to buy. Just sort of doing that makes me feel calmer because I feel like I have my act together. Yeah. Sometimes I also will go online and do online shopping, usually for Christmas and birthdays. And that makes me feel like I'm a little bit ahead of my game, especially if I'm doing it a month or two early. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of online shopping or like hyper local small business shopping, but I don't seem to do anything in between. <laughs> I mostly buy everything at the grocery store. If I can't get it at the grocery store or on Amazon, I probably am not buying it. I don't go to the grocery store. I do the online pickup. Oh. I don't even in the store. Which you know, like grocery shopping is actually one of my self-care items because if I'm grocery shopping, I can't work. And I'm, it's so easy for me to fall into working, replying to work-related texts or messages or anything like that. And if I'm grocery shopping, I'm not doing any of that. So that oh. is one thing. I do enjoy grocery shopping because I also do it usually on Tuesdays after my morning class. So mm -hmm. it gives me a little break before I go home and jump into the next part of my work day. Otherwise, I will work from the time I get up Tuesday until after Zumba's done at 7.30 without taking a break aside from shoving some food in my face. So I do enjoy grocery shopping because it forces me to, to step away for a few minutes. I also like to go to Winners and just do a Ooh. few loops around, even though I very rarely buy anything. Because, again, it just prevents me from anything that can keep me from working for a few minutes usually is on my self-care list. Yes, that's such a good point. I feel like, I mean, I'm self-employed as well, and I also have a tendency to work every available moment. So I feel like self-care is even more important for people like us because we need to have those things that make us stop working. Yeah, and where I work every evening and during the day, I find it really hard to take a chunk of time in the middle of the afternoon. It just feels so wrong to me. So if I can have those forced times like grocery shopping or going to an osteopath appointment then I have to stop, so. Yeah. Oh, totally agree. I know, I feel like in, during the middle of the day, I mean, I have the flexibility that I could stop working for a while and do something else, but I feel so consumed with guilt because I'm like, it's it's 2 p.m., it's 3 p.m., the rest of the world is working, of course I have to be working. I know. When reality is, I often work on the weekends or on the evenings, too, so, I mean, I should feel better about taking that time off self-care, but it's hard. It is hard. You feel like by doing that, you're sacrificing your income and, you know, maybe you're disappointing a client by not being available for them every second. But one of the things that I feel like I have to keep reminding myself. Yeah, same, same. Do you find, do you find putting on makeup is self-care for you? Because it definitely is for me. Yeah, 100%. And also sometimes just getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> like Wednesdays, I don't usually leave the house until I teach in the evening. So it's very easy for me to not comb my hair until it's time to leave. And then I just feel like a schlup all day. So oh. if I take 10 minutes and actually like comb my hair and straight iron it if it's standing out everywhere and put on like face lotion and maybe some makeup, I feel much less like a uh, troll. So, Oh, absolutely. Even if I'm not leaving the house, I always have to have makeup on. Just like a bit of mascara, blush, lipstick, just something to give me some color because... I'm like a really ugly pale yellow naturally, <laughs> like a Star Trek person. I am basically see-through. I'm so pale and transparent. So like you could, if I don't have anything on, you could lose me out <laughs> in the wilderness because you can see right through me. I'm so translucent. Oh, absolutely. Hashtag pale problems. Correct. <laughs> I also find like painting my nails and painting my toenails is a really big self-care item. I mean, year round, I always have to have paint on my toenails. I know Me some too. people, like, they don't seem to do it except for the summer. I know. I also shave my legs in the winter too. I, these, I, I shave my legs basically every day, but I'm in capri pants all year <laughs> round. So, <laughs> I'm in capri pants year round just attending Zumba classes and I'm 
not so good about shaving during the winter, I must admit, because I'm just in a class with, like, women, and they're my friends, and no one cares. Yeah, I don't, it's not even that I think people care. I don't know. It's just, I just do it. I don't, probably because I take baths. Yeah. And I find it's much easier to shave one's legs in a bathtub than it is when you're in the shower. It's so much easier to get, like, razor burn if you're having a shower. Maybe it's because I'm not very good at taking showers. <laughs> so I guess that actually falls into part of my self-care is I always have a bath unless I'm really rushed on time. Because, again, it forces me to stop. And I can, yes, use my phone over the side of the bathtub, which I do frequently. But that's often when I watch everybody's Insta stories and just kind of sit there mm -hmm. for 20 minutes. So I just use my leg shaving time as a continuation of that. And, again, I'm not working. So I know there needs to be more ways that we stop working. Sometimes... Um, I'll meet up during the day with like another self-employed friend here in Toronto mm -hmm. and go out for a tea or for a coffee at like a local coffee shop. And I really enjoy that. And I need to make a point of doing it more, but I find we're both, we're all so busy. I know. All the self-employed people, it's hard to set aside that time and say, okay, you know, for these two hours, I will not be actively focusing on making money. Yeah. And we have weird hours too. It's not even just that we're busy, which I have a love-hate relationship with the word busy, but... <laughs> We have weird hours, like, I am much easier to meet up with someone at 1.30 in the afternoon than it is for me to go out for supper with anybody ever. And more yeah. people are free for supper than they are at 1 in the afternoon, so it makes it hard. For sure. And I find my kids tend to have their activities are all in, like, the supper hour, which I really don't yeah. like. But, I mean, our daughter is in dance. She just finished a term of gymnastics. Um, our son's in Taekwondo, <laughs> our daughter now does swimming, our son's in band. Uh, I feel like we have so many things going on, and I would not consider any of those activities to be self-care for me. They're things I do for my kids. Yeah. And in general, like, hanging out with my kids is something I enjoy, but it is also not self-care. No, there's, you can enjoy something without it being self-care. Yes, exactly. I think self-care is, like, when it's for you. Yeah. Something that Something. gives you pleasure just in it being. Exactly. Like, I typically hate driving, and that's why I love living in Truro, because everything is literally five minutes away or less. So it takes me, like, a month and a half to go through a tank of gas. Nice. Um, yeah. So, but when I do have to go into the city and I'm by myself, I always think, oh, it's such a long drive. I don't want to do it. But then when I'm in the car, I can listen to music or a podcast, and I end up really enjoying that time because it's not something that I do normally. Yeah. And then some people love driving, so that is one of their forms of self-care. So everybody is different, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't recognize either, that just because something is self-care for you doesn't mean it's going to work for someone else. It might make someone else's eyes bleed to think about yeah. sorting Lego by the color, Whereas we are just filled with glee at the thought of it. Oh, exactly. I'm looking across the room right now in my office where I have my mason jars full of ribbon and they're all organized oh. by color. It's Roy G.B. order. You're so amazing. my people. Oh, just so soothing to look at. But I mean, also, I'm, Zumba is a huge part of self-care for me. I mean, I don't teach, but I, I, I am a happy attendant of class. And I go twice a week. And my instructor was recently away for a few weeks. And when I was able to go back to class on Monday, I was so happy. I missed it intensely. And it wasn't even just the exercise that I missed. It was just seeing my instructor, seeing all my Zumba friends, getting out of the house, and just having that hour of, like, happy, fun music dancing time. Yeah. Even I, after last, uh, last November when we had all those snowstorms, when, that oh. week of winter we had in November... I went an entire week. It was either seven or nine days without teaching a Zumba class. And that uh -huh. was the first time in, I was a, I've been a Zumba instructor for nine years now. So it was the first time in nine years I had taken that much time off from it. And it was really, it was nice. By the end of it, I did miss it. And I was super happy to get back. But yeah, even just that music, because a lot of it's not music that you hear otherwise in your day-to-day -day life. Yes, and it's so peppy. Yeah. It's, fun. it's like a happy, happy pill. It is. It is.
tell you one of mine, and it is gross, but I'm Ooh. here for it, is like Biore nose strips. Oh, those. Oh, man. I love, and then I am the person that is like, take a look at this. <laughs> After I pull it off, I'm like, look at all the stuff that just came out of my pores. <laughs> Those I, were never satisfying for me. I tried them and I felt like I never had that look how like on the oh, commercial. Like, yeah, like, I think some people just have the right size pores for it and some people don't. And I must be that magic person because so satisfying. That would be satisfying. Yeah. I'm sure I have blackheads, but those things don't work for me. Yeah, I think, like, I have fairly large pores on my nose, so I think that that's probably why they, it just hauls it right out. But you probably can't get enough contact, maybe. I don't know. Heard. Um, one of my weird ones is sitting on my basement stairs in the dark and scrolling through Pinterest. Isn't that specific? Yeah, but I often will stop my car and then just sit there, not doing oh. anything. Just sit there. Yep. Or after I get out of the bathtub, I go and my pajamas are usually in our bedroom, so I'll have my bathrobe on. I'll go lay on the bed and I'll just be there like staring at the ceiling for like 15 minutes. And my husband will come along and he's like, are you just laying here in the dark? Yeah. Laying there in the dark is great. Or sitting there in the dark. Something about the darkness. Mm -hmm. It just means that you can sort of like shut your mind down. Yeah. It takes away a lot of that ocular pressure too. It does. I also like, I'll sit in the dark and I'll scroll through my camera roll because like my camera roll seems to be a snapshot of my life because it's the pictures I take, but it's also, I'm really big on taking screenshots. Mm -hmm. So if I see something that I want to do or something I want to download, something I want to, somewhere I want to go, I take a screenshot of it. So I remember, and then I'm constantly scrolling through my camera roll and being like, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that was funny. And sometimes I'll just take screenshots of text conversations that I want to remember because eventually you're going to have to delete your texts, but you could have a really fun photo of the text that you can look at years from now. I have a lot of weird screenshots of peculiar things myself. <laughs> I'm sure we all do. I think so. But do you back up your photos? One of the things that's made me really happy lately is I started using Google Photos mm -hmm. and I'm Google fan, but somehow I hadn't used it until recently. So it automatically like backs up the photos from my phone to like my Gmail account. And yeah. so I could take a picture on my phone and then two seconds later be on my computer and like easily access that photo. Yeah, I do that. And the only thing for anyone listening, anyone who sets this up, just make sure that you have your settings so that it's only going to upload when you're on Wi Fi or you could have a very big data bill. <laughs> that is important to know. <laughs> check mine. I think the default now is to just do it on Wi-Fi, but yeah, just go into your settings and double check it. It's life-changing to know that like, if I drop my phone in a toilet tomorrow, I don't have to worry about losing you know, the 10,000 photos that are on there. I know, yeah. And I do also uh, back up my phone at night through iTunes or wherever. And the last time my husband upgraded his phone... They were like, do you have your phone backed up? And he was like, I don't know. And they looked and he didn't. And it took six hours for his phone to back up. Oh, my God. Because he had never, ever done it. And it was a friend of mine who was working there. And she's like, who doesn't back up their phone? <laughs> it was him. That was who. Oh, my God. That's funny. Have you ever done any scrapbooking? I did. I have... Um, like, when I was a kid, we did scrapbooking, but it was not nearly as fancy as scrapbooking is now. It was like a manila journal, and you glued your stuff on it in the end. I do have some things. Like, I did one of our wedding, and I have a couple other ones that I have done. But, I don't know. It's a little bit too finicky for me, I think. And I think I get a little bit... It gets a little bit costly sometimes when people are always buying all these things, and you get sucked into one of those idea that it has to look a certain way so I have a lot of scrapbooking paper and accessories and I often use it for things that are not scrapbooking yeah absolutely I feel like scrapbooking had a moment like 10 years ago yeah so Dad was a baby like I was hardcore into scrapbooking I did a scrapbook for every month of his life for like the first probably like 18 months there and then you I had go 
<laughs> and then I was like, wow, now I have two kids under two and I have no time to scrapbook. And so she doesn't have any scrapbook. Yes. So you have one child who's going to grow up and be like, how come there's no pictures of me? Exactly. It's second child syndrome. Mm -hmm. But I, so I realized I couldn't scrapbook anymore. I still do have plans. I want to make like a Christmas only scrapbook that I add like one page to every year because I yeah. feel like it's manageable. But I started making photo books also when my kids were babies. And then I do one photo book every year for their birthday. And now I am like two years behind that. Oh, wow. Well. But at this point, I am going to get caught up because they love having these hardcover, shiny photo books. And we have them in our living room. Their friends look through them when they come over. It's, it's really cute. It's just something that – it's one of the many things on my list that it, I feel so good when I finish the book and order it. And then I have to remind myself to just keep on top of it because it's a pretty big project. Yeah. So actually, one of the reasons, actually the main reason I started my Susie Reads a Lot Instagram account is because I listened to an episode of What Should I Read Next, which is one of my favorite bookish podcasts, by the way. And the girl there had started a single bookstagram account because she orders chat books they're the oh. ones that are just of your Instagram photos. So mm -hmm. a couple times a year, she prints out, gets hardcover books that's just every book that she's read of the year. So she can look back at it. And she said her friends like to look at it. And you can read some of her comments about what she thought of the book. And I was just like, oh, I need that. So that's why I started it was so that I could <laughs> begin to get these little books printed off so I could have a little visual reminder of what books I read in the run of a year. So that's super nerdy, but kind of fits in the self-care. That's very cool. Have you ordered one yet? I have not because I'm lazy. And also I can't remember how many books I need to have read. I can't remember what the cutoff is. I feel like it was 40. So I had to wait till I get 40 books for this year because I was waiting to start January 1st. I didn't want to have a book that started like November through February. That just hurts my heart. So I should be doing one soon, I think. Well, that's a great idea. I haven't ordered a chat book, but I've heard that they're great. I haven't either, but I'm excited. Sometimes I will clean out like a closet or a single drawer or a cabinet or something just because it's been bugging me. Mm -hmm. That gives me a huge boost of happiness. Yeah, I redid our Tupperware cabinet a few months ago. Ooh. And I'm still thrilled. That sounds amazing. With it. I got the tip from Laura that if you organize something and then it becomes disorganized again, you still, you didn't fix your problem. Yeah, so definitely. I think that I fixed my Tupperware problem by getting rid of most anything that wasn't actually Tupperware. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because it's still organized and normally you organize it and then three days later it's a big old mess again. Oh, exactly. That's what we do um, in our Tupperware cabinet. We have one of those big plastic drawers that I just kind of stuck inside the cabinet mm -hmm. just to hold the kids' lunch stuff. So when you have to make their lunches, you have this one bin that you can kind of toss their thermoses and anything that's specific to school. Yeah, I actually have a separate water bottle drawer. Oh, my goodness. I bet you have so many water bottles. Um, my husband has a heart attack anytime I come in the door with a new water bottle. So I've just taken to not telling him. How many do you think you have? I've got rid of a lot recently, actually. I would say probably 15. I'm yeah. not sure. I got rid of a bunch. I have two that I recently bought specifically for using on my paddleboard because they had a little thing that I can attach with a carabiner. I got a new one at Superstore a few weeks ago that was really, really pretty, and I just couldn't leave it behind. But I've been doing the one-in, one-out Mm -hmm. situation yep. and I think I've gotten to the point where I don't have any I can get rid of now so I can't buy any more. That sounds good. I uh, specifically bought myself one of those camel back water bottles yeah. because it had a hose that you could attach to it and then there was like a little mouth clamp yes. and it's probably for like serious athletes but I bought it because when I'm sewing I can't take my hands off and <laughs> I get so dehydrated <laughs> so then I can just stick the thing in my mouth and like slurp as I'm sewing. <laughs> I have a camel back camelback with the backpack and last night my husband was talking about how he has to remind himself at work to drink more because he keeps getting so dehydrated so I was like did you want to borrow my camelback and just wear that all day and he was like I don't think that that would go over well I was like well I tried now I want to get a backpack because I'm assuming that's what this is designed for so your water bottle can stay in your backpack and the hose can run around to your mouth I don't know because the backpack comes with like a bladder 
Oh. It's not a water bottle. So yours might be, it sounds maybe for like cycling. So you could put it in the, the water bottle okay. thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, like a regular Camelback water bottle. And then I had to buy the hose part separately. That's amazing. I feel like I saw a picture of you using it before, maybe in work. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Camelback Pure Flow. <laughs> blue hose that attaches and then... you should contact them because these sewers are probably a whole demographic that they haven't thought about targeting exactly extreme sewing dehydration it's a thing it's a thing i mean honestly i i have to make a point that when i'm refilling my bobbin to like chug a whole bottle of water because i'll be so dehydrated at that point if well I'm and i my... mean the fabric sucks the oils and everything right out of your fingers see so you, everything yeah. that's dry it's a real problem exactly I'm going to invent one, and it's just going to be patented for creative people. Yeah, and it could, you could make cozies. Oh, knitted cozies. Yeah. I once sewed a cozy to go over my Lysol wipes. So bad, but I had them in the bathroom. I think it was when the kids were really little, and I used a lot of Lysol wipes. And I sewed, like, a chevron fabric cozy that slid over the tub of Lysol wipes. Made I them love pretty. that. I love that. <laughs> it was, like, the worst thing I never made at that point. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. Well, I think we've given people some good ideas for some non-traditional self-care tips. Very non-traditional. Yeah. Um, along with the Lego, you could sort crayons. Crayons are nice, especially if someone has the 100 pack. Oh, wow. That would be good. We always just have like a giant bucket that we put all the crayons in because there's so many, like hundreds. Yeah. Well, since I don't have children, I keep all of mine still in the box, so I can keep them organized that way, but... Oh, it would be so nice to have crayons still in the box. That's a dream. Maybe when the kids are old. Oh, I thought of one other thing. Yes. So one other thing I like to do is I go on Pinterest specifically to look for inspirational quotes. Ooh. Because it has so many good ones, and you can specifically put in if there's, like, if you're upset about something specific... You know, like betrayal or anger or sadness or, you know, like lack of motivation. You can put in exactly what you're feeling and Pinterest will give you amazing, beautiful quotes that you can then make as your phone wallpaper. That's a great idea because I would I would think to search like Instagram for something like that. But Pinterest oh. is probably a better place. Pinterest is where it's all about. And then you can just like screenshot them and then they'll appear in your camera roll whenever you When you to. go to peruse it in the dark. Exactly, in the dark, on the stairs. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me today, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online? Yes, my blog is heathershandmadelife.com. I'm on Instagram at hfxheather, uh, Twitter, hfxheather, Facebook, uh, Heather Laura Clark, journalist and blogger. So fancy. I also write for the Chronicle Herald. I am in, oh, that's uh, right. Yes. Yes, I have a, a DIY column um, every Saturday. And then I write a parenting column called The Mom Scene that goes in all of the community weeklies. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everybody go check out Heather. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Heather. We had so much fun recording that episode for you. So I hope you found it entertaining and maybe give you a couple new ideas as to some new self-care tips or activities for yourself. I have to, as always, say thank you to Clara Oswald Thevens and Rose Tyler Thevens, the Kitten Sisters, who are our associate producers. And thank you so much for listening. If you have not left me a review on iTunes, I would so appreciate it if you did. It only takes a minute and it really does help with the discoverability of this podcast and helping new people find us. So if you haven't done that, if you could do that, that would be wonderful. And I will talk to you next week.